Dear students, now uh, from unit 5, we shall discuss a theorem under unit 5. So the theorem is, if the real valued functions, if the real value functions, if the real valued functions f and g, f and g are continuous, f and g are continuous at a point, say an arbitrary point A in R arbitrary point means a general point in R then so uh, f plus g f minus g f into g if this g of a is non-zero then we have to prove that f by g is also continuous is also continuous at the point A. It's also continuous at the point A. So this is what we need to prove. So already we have proved same like this result. Right here for this uh, theorem f and g both are continuous at R, both are real valued function. So definitely the domain is uh, co-domain is real value, real numbers and this A which is an element of the domain is R. Therefore, for this theorem, both the domain as well as the codomain are real numbers. So, f is a function from R to R, and it is given that the function f is continuous at A, that is, for any x that comes very close to A the corresponding f of x will come very close to f of a. That is, we already studied the definition of the limit of a function. Limit of a function on real line. So what it says is, the function f is continuous at a point a in r if one only if for any given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that whenever our x comes very close to a our f of x comes very close to f of a so, uh, if this f of a, we have already learned that if this is L, we call it as a limit of a function. Okay, that is the only change. Now, earlier we studied the definition of limit of a function. If this L happens to be f of a, that is the function is defined at the point A, then we say that the function is continuous at the point. The limit definition will be changed as the function is continuous at A. f is continuous at a. This is what we see. So already we have studied the definition of the limit of a function. Under that topic we say that if f and g again here uh, before going to the proof already we discussed in the limit of a functions. So if f is having a limit l and g is having the limit n then f plus g is a function that is having the limit L plus N and F minus G is a function having the limit L minus N F into G is having the limit LN and if G is non-zero then F by G sorry N is non-zero then F by G is having the limit L by N these things we already proved in the topic called as limit of a function on real line the same thing 
instead of this L and M, that is the limit, here instead of L, we are going to put F of A. In place of N, we are going to put G of A. That's all. So the proof of this topic, uh, the proof under this topic is named this one. Here, wherever L and N is there, you have to replace F of A and G of A because it is given that F is here, both F and G are continuous at A. If suppose F is continuous at A, meaning is what? We are going to use the definition. If F is continuous at A, then whenever X is very close to A, F of X is close to L. This is what, uh, sorry, F is uh, not, um, uh, continuous means you have to replace it, sorry. You have to replace this limit in general by F of A. If suppose F is having a limit, then you put some L. There exists some real number, L in R such that it is converging to the limit. So, uh, this is the definition of a continuous function F at a point A. Similarly, G is also continuous at A, the same thing you can use it. So, the hint for this theorem under the topic, this is the first topic under the unit 5 is, uh, functions continuous on a point on real line. So, to prove this, you can make use of this theorem in the section given under uh, limit of a function on the real line. Uh, what are the replacements you have to make? I have given it. So, there, there in that proof, f is converging to the limit L and g is converging to the limit L whenever x is converging to A. So, this limit for this theorem, since f and g are continuous at A, so we can use the definition that this is nothing but f of A and this is nothing but g of A. That's all. So, you can use the same techniques available in this proof. This completes the proof of this theorem. And <coughs> so this theorem and the next theorem Next theorem, um, if suppose if f and g are real valued functions, f and g are real valued functions, if f is if f is continuous at a and g is g is continuous at f of a then g composition f is continuous at a so before going to the proof we have to get some idea about what is the composition of functions okay. so composition of functions for example uh, you consider some three uh, sets Suppose there are A, B, C and suppose F is a function from A to B and G is a function from B to C and here I say that this is my the range of F that is this is nothing but F of B and G is a function from you know, this F of A to C then our composition of function is a function from A to B that is G composition F is a function from A to C. So these things you have to keep in mind before coming to the proof of this theorem. So now what is given is F and G are real valued functions. Okay, it is understood that the domains. So this B is uh, real numbers, A is also real numbers. And this is a point A, is here. 
So if A is here, F of A should fall here. Because this is a range of F. Then we have to prove that G composition F is continuous at A. It is G composition F is a function. We have to prove that this is a function continuous at A. That is, what is the definition of a continuous function? Once again we recall. Continuous function F at the point A. What is the definition? Given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that whenever x and a x comes very close to a f of x comes very close to uh, generally we write it as limit if it is a limit of function since it is continuous we write f of a so f of a comes very close to f of a f of x comes very close to f of a so now same thing so now we have to prove that the function g composition f is continuous that is i will write so we start the proof here we must show that we must show that limit when x approaches a g of um, g composition f i can write like this see actually g composition f in general the value of this function is generally written like this g of of x so this one i'm going to use like this notation so g composition f of x is equals to g composition f of x this is what i have to prove to show that here the function is g composition f so no other change the same uh, here the general definition in place of f we use g composition f so that is that is, we must, it is, we must show that, it is, we must show that, for any given, for any given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a, delta greater than 0 such that so the same thing the general definition I am going to use it for the function g composition f that's all such that whenever my x is coming very close to a that is the meaning of this my g of f of x g of f of x comes very close to g of f of x comes very close to g of f of a. So this is what we need to prove it. So this one we give it as a number because finally we have to show that one is proved. So we are going to, uh, this is our aim, we have to prove that whenever this is true, uh, this is also true. So now for uh, calculation simplicity, let us assume that b equals to f of a. We are going to assume that b equals to. So now you can assume that where is b? This is b. I am going to assume that this b equals to f of a. So b is where? In the range of f. So that is very important you have to keep in mind. b equals to f of a. Now, by hypothesis, The limit x approaches b g of y equals to g of b by hypothesis means what hypothesis means it is given that g is continuous at what point g is continuous at a f of a this f of a only i assumed as b and all the elements in a any general element in a we gave it as x any general element in b that to particularly in f of a the general element in we name it as y to avoid the confusion because if you take same x we get confusion whether it belongs to a or b or a domain or codomain we get confused so we give the different uh, alphabets so this is by assumption it is given that g is continuous at what point f of a so x approaches b g of y must come very close to what g of b 
and g of b is where b is here means g of b is somewhere here and y is here means this is g of y so i have to show that g of y comes very close to g of b whenever y comes very close to b this is what we have to uh, this is given sorry this is given this is given because g is continuous at what point f of a so this is given so we use the definition of uh, continuous function so this is given so we use the definition of continuous function so from here for therefore i am using the definition of continuous function for the function b which is continuous at the point b so for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that whenever sorry here a big mistake i have done this is y whenever y comes very close to b g of y comes very close to g of b so this is given so this one i give the number for this is already proved one is the one we have to prove two is already done it is given it is given also again by hypothesis again it is given that now i am going to use the hypothesis f is continuous at a see so what is this whenever x comes very close to a f of x that is y this is nothing but f of x f of x comes very close to f of a that is b so by hypothesis it is given that f is continuous at a that is Um, so uh, g of y is this now. So now uh, uh, I cannot use the same epsilon and delta. So now for this function, I am going to use um, delta and eta. So so instead of epsilon here, I am going to change the epsilon. I can give a different variable. So for this one, for given eta greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 um, see one more thing a slight change I have to make see here this one instead of delta I put eta so what happens is this becomes eta. that I can change our own variable so so you have to link this uh, this result and 2 so that I get the result 1 so this is very important so epsilon I take eta ok so now <coughs> by hypothesis for a given eta greater than 0 there exists a delta such that uh, whenever x is coming very close to a my f of x comes very close to f of a so this is the given eta so now that is 0 less than mod x minus c is less than delta implies so what is this what is f of x in general y minus f of a is nothing but b is less than eta so this is number 3 so now how to link this 3 and 2 So now you see whenever this condition is satisfied, this is satisfied. 
this is nothing but th this if this is satisfied then this is satisfied okay so we are going to combine this 3 and 2 now so whenever x comes very close to a we get that I am going to write this one y comes very close to b when y comes very close to b then from 2 what do we get when this is true then which implies g of y comes very close to g of b that is so what is y actually y is nothing but some f of x minus g of b is nothing but f of a already we assumed that b is nothing but what f of a somewhere we assumed here for okay. so what we prove now when x is coming very close to a we prove that g of f of x comes very close to g of f of a so for a given epsilon we have shown that there exists a delta such that this condition satisfied. This implies that limit x approaches a g of f of x equals to g of f of a. This completes the proof. So uh, this 2 and 3 you have to uh, little bit trick. The trick is you have to choose what is that eta epsilon delta. So you have to choose it properly so that you can link both 3 and 2 to get the result 1. So you have to get, this is a trial and error only. So how to link that accordingly you have to choose which is delta, which is epsilon. Here epsilon becomes here the eta. Here this eta becomes the epsilon of this uh, uh, third equation. So <coughs> you have to be very careful in choosing that. So this completes the proof of this theorem. Okay. So we shall discuss the next topic that is called reformulation.